You know, last night as as I was studying and pondering and praying the uh, praying uh, to the Lord and going over scriptures and just thinking about the time that we're in right now today. Just thinking about everything that we are, uh, everything that we're seeing today. And a sadness began to come upon me. A sadness, you know, on one hand, it's exciting to see the signs that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24. It's exciting to, the, to see these things come to pass. It's exciting to see prophecy unfold right before our eyes. But at the same time, you know, if, if we truly have any kind of love and compassion in our heart, any kind of empathy, then we should also, we should also be sad. We should be sad to see that so many, because, you know, Jesus, we know that, that, that the Lord God Almighty cannot get it wrong. Jesus himself said, many are on the road, that, that broad path, many are on the road leading and heading to destruction. So, so we know that, that this is going to happen. So only few, there's only few who are waking up to the truth. There's only few who are choosing to travel that narrow road, that narrow path to take up their cross and follow after Jesus. It's so sad now, I'm getting back to this. It's so sad though to see so many get caught up into this deception. Nothing new is under the sun. We can look back to the days of Moses and at the bottom of the mountain when they erected that idol, that, that golden calf, and they did it in the name of the Lord. They did it in the name of the Lord God Almighty but they weren't following the Lord God Almighty. They were following other gods. And it's so sad and heartbreaking to see these individuals, even though, because you know, when it's all said and done, we're, we're making choices about our own life. And we, we are either choosing to follow Jesus in life or we're either choosing to follow other gods and head off into destruction. It's sad to see that so many people are not heeding the absolute warnings that are right before our very eyes. This, this isn't hidden truth. However, if you're gonna reject the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, who is a direct work of the cross, see the Holy Spirit living in the heart of the believer is a direct work of the cross. And with the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us and leading and guiding our walk comes discernment, comes understanding of scripture. The Holy Spirit will unlock the truth, will open our blind eyes to the truth. But if we choose to reject him, reject the work of, of, of Jesus Christ on the cross, then we'll be blind to the truth and we will forever follow false teachers and false doctrines and be deceived. Now, I want to take you to Matthew 24. Now, we know that Jesus, you know, if in the first part of Matthew 24, the disciples came to him and said, Lord, tell us what shall be the sign of your coming in the end of the age. And then the Lord began with, you know, the very first warning sign he gave, which is the warning sign that 99% of individuals ignore. He said to take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, in his name, in the name of Jesus, saying that I am Christ, or you can also say anointed, and they shall deceive many. So many will come saying that they are sent by God, and those many will deceive many. We are literally, let, hear, hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. We are literally watching this play out right before our eyes, right here on YouTube. We've got individuals here on YouTube who is bald, bald face calling Jesus Christ a liar. That the words that, that, that the, the scripture and the, and, and the Bible speak 
They go completely against the word. If the Lord God Almighty says to forgive, they say, you don't have to forgive. If Jesus says forgive, they say, like Renee Rowland, they say, you don't have to forgive. If scripture says to, uh, to, to repent and be baptized and be, uh, baptized and be, repent and be baptized, <laughs> it's like spit that out. If scripture says to repent and be baptized, they say, they say that you don't have to do that. If Jesus says to follow him, as he says in John uh, 10, 27, that my sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me, they follow Jesus, right? If, if Jesus says that, they say you don't have to follow Jesus. So we got individuals here on, that literally come on camera like Renee, Renee uh, Rowland, uh, Tim Henderson, uh, Todd Naper, and all these other individuals who, for years now, they have a following. Just like that following at the bottom of the mountain in the days of Moses. And oh, they're doing it in the name of the Lord. All in the name of the Lord. I think about in the book of Acts. When this demon-possessed slave girl began following, this is in Acts 16. They, she began following Paul and Silas. And she started declaring that these men are servants of the Most High God. They are declaring to you the way of salvation. And scripture goes on to say in Acts that she did this for several days. To the point where Paul finally got fed up with her and cast that demon out of her. See, not, let me say this. Not everyone who is declaring uh, Jesus, not everyone who is cheering you on and, and declaring the word of God is of God. Even the demons will preach. Look, you, you see in Matthew chapter 4, Satan himself came to Jesus. Preaching Psalms 91. See, even the devil will use scripture. Even the devil shows up as an angel of light. Shows up as ministers of, of, of Christ. Declaring the gospel. We can go even farther in Acts. How about Acts 19? See, see God was using Paul mightily in Ephesus. And this group of individuals, they decided that they were going to follow suit. And they began going door to door. And then they came up in, in, this, in this one location at this one house and faced a demon-possessed person. And they, they went on to say, in, in the name, in the name, of the, in the name of the Jesus that Paul preaches, come out. But something very interesting happened there. Scripture goes on to say that that demon-possessed individual spoke back. And you know, you were, you were in trouble when they speaking back to you now. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? And Scripture goes on to say that that demon-possessed individual attacked them beat them and wounded them, stripped them butt naked and ran them off into the streets. See, not everyone declaring Jesus is of God. Not everyone preaching the word is from the Lord. Jesus even went, to, went on to say in Matthew chapter 7, many will say unto me on that day, Lord, Lord, we cast out demons in your name. We did many mighty works in your name. And Jesus said, but I'll turn to them and say uh, publicly and openly, I never knew you. I never had a personal relationship with you. You were busy playing games and playing church. You know, I want to take you. I want to take you to Matthew 24. 
And I'm reading this out of the Amplified Version. <clears throat> Matthew 24, I want to pick up in verse 37 now. Jesus speaking here, For the coming of the Son of Man, the Messiah, will be just like the days of Noah. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the very day when Noah entered the, in other words, business as usual, business as usual. They were just living their life, doing their thing. Another day, here we are. Until the very day when Noah entered the ark. See, Noah had given them warning. Noah had issued the warning. Verse 39, and they did not know or understand until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Unexpected judgment. At that time, two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other one left. Two will be, two men will be in the, uh, excuse me, two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, the other one left. Verse 42, this is a key verse here. So be alert. This is, see, this is Jesus. This is the Lord warning us, giving us heads up, giving us fair warning. But if, if we refuse to pick up the scriptures, then those warnings mean nothing. So be alert. Give strict, and keep in mind that this is Jesus speaking here. Don't let your love for your teacher cause you to go to the lake of fire. Don't let your don't don't let your your infatuation infatuation for your favorite teacher that you propped up on this pedestal cause you to go to the lake of fire. I don't know about you, but I choose to trust the words of Jesus over the words of any man. I don't care how popular they are. I don't care how charismatic they are, how great of speakers they are, how much pink lipstick they put on. I don't care. Look, I don't care if they drive around in the car with wearing sunglasses and been married eight times, excuse me, three times in the last eight years. I don't care how charming they are. We were warned about charmers. Paul warned us that in, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, talking about these super apostles who would be cunning. And through their cunningness, they would deceive. And people would receive it, and, and this is the word he used it, he, they would receive it beautifully. You're... You are receiving this deception so beautifully. You, you're at, you, you, you receive it like it's a beautiful thing in your life. But it's taking you to the lake of fire. To you, it's beautiful. What, the, what, 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 what Lucifer is doing in your life. I want to talk about delusion. See that's that that is that is the very that is the very core of delusion to be on the way to destruction but yet you are you are accepting it like it's a beautiful thing. Now I don't care what Tim Henderson is telling you cuz he's he's saying a lot of stuff that doesn't line up with scripture. And his followers they they they, they just they, his his fanatic followers Man, they'll, they'll defend Tim and they'll defend his words and Tim said this and Tim said that and Tim, 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 Tim. Tim. But yet not one of them will defend scripture. Now, one of them comes and, and shares the word of God. Instead of the word of God, it's the word of Tim. See, not one of the followers of Renee, or very few followers, I'll say that, because some, some very few, very few wake up, but very, very few followers of Renee uh, Roland calls her out on her error and her lies where she goes completely against scripture, uh, completely against the word of God. Like, I want to tell you something here because I've been talking about, I've been talking about the shepherd, right? 
the job of a shepherd. See, my, jo my job as a shepherd is not to protect the wolf. The shepherd's job is to protect the flock from the wolf, to protect the flock from the perpetrator. Now, you have so many individuals who want to come and they like to use love as a, as a prop for error, a prop for, for deception, a prop for Im immoral living, a prop for rejecting Jesus and his Holy Spirit. They say, love, love, love. And in, in their minds, love, love, love is all about protecting the perpetrator. Love, love, love is all about protecting the child molester, protecting, protecting the false teacher, protecting the murderer, protect, protecting the follower of Satan. Love, love, love. And in their view and in their minds, love is all about the wolf while they completely ignore the flock. But Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 11, that the good shepherd lays his life down for the flock, not the wolf. Now, we know that it is the will of God that everyone comes to repentance. But truth be told, everyone ain't coming to repentance. Though it is the will of God, we see, though, in, in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus clearly tells us that many are on the road heading toward destruction, and it's by choice. There ain't nobody forcing them to go. It's by their choice. It's by their choosing. And it's by the choosing of many here on the Internet that we see that they are following. They're ignoring Scripture. They tolerate Jezebel, but they won't tolerate Scripture. See, Revelation 2.20 this is what Jesus said. This is what I have against you. Is that you tolerate that woman Jezebel. And we see a whole generation. We see a whole, look, we see all, all across social media today, this is happening. A lot of folks are tolerating Jezebel. They're tolerating false doctrines. They're tolerating false teachers. But on the flip side, 2 Timothy 4.3, for the time will come when they will not tolerate sound doctrine. What a contrast. I'll tolerate Jezebel, but I won't tolerate sound doctrine. I'll tolerate Renee Rowland telling me I don't have to forgive my brother or sister, but I won't tolerate Jesus' own very words out of the scripture. I won't tolerate this. I trust Renee over this. I trust Tim over him. I trust Todd over sound doctrine. I trust my favorite teacher who makes me feel so, so good. For the time is coming when they will not. I mean, I mean, we know that that scripture is is truth and God is never wrong. But who would have thought that we would have seen deception at this level. It's amazing. It's still amazing to watch. And it's and, and like I started with in the message, it's sad. It's sad to see individuals willingly going to the lake of fire. Verse 43. But understand this. Well, let me jump back to 42 again. Verse 42 of Matthew 24. So be alert. Give strict attention. This is Jesus speaking. Give strict attention. Be cautious and active in faith. See, James chapter 2 says, Faith without works is useless and dead. But these teachers here tell you all you got to do is pray a prayer out of your mouth and you're on your way to the sweet by and by. But they're lying to you. Because all through scripture, we, we have biblical examples of what Jesus called faith and what the scripture calls faith. Like the woman with the issue of blood, how she pressed through the crowd to get to Jesus. Action. She took action. Hebrews 11 says, by faith, Abraham obeyed God's word. By faith, Noah moved with fear and reverence of the Lord. 
We see the faith of the blind beggar caused him to, to, to rise up and he refused to listen to the crowd who told him to sit down and shut up. A crowd of religious folks, spiritual folks. Won't you sit on down? Sit down. Sit down, you old fool. Sit down, you blind, you blind old man, you blind beggar. Sit down. And the faith of this blind beggar, his faith in Christ, his faith in Jesus caused him to continue to seek him and, and, and cry out to him that much more. See, true biblical faith produces the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our life. It is impossible to have biblical faith without the good works of the Holy Spirit present. Let me say that one more time. It is impossible to have biblical faith, the faith that Jesus speaks of, the faith that the scripture speaks of, the faith that the scripture speaks of. I'm not talking about Hollywood here. I'm talking about biblical faith. It's impossible to have biblical faith without having the good works of the Holy Spirit present in your life. Now, on the other hand, it is very possible to have works present in your life, which are self-righteous works, and not have biblical faith. Hello. So this is where so many people get all, this, this is that confusion. This is why so many folks, when they are quoting to you Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, they purposely leave out verse 10, which says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. The good works of the Holy Spirit, because we know that, that the, 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 the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplishes. That's Galatians 5.22. Let me say that one more time. That the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplishes. So they always want to lump self-righteous works with good works. This is a very deceptive and evil thing. And this is from Lucifer himself. Those two are not the same. When the Holy Spirit is not present in our life, of course, we will be living for self. And all we will produce in our life is self-righteous works. It's like all these movements movements that we're seeing today, like this, the natural movement. I don't wear makeup. I, I'm holy because I don't wear makeup. That's self-righteousness. I'm, I'm, here's another one. I'm holy because I read out of the King James Bible. I'm King James only and that makes me holy. I'm holy because I'm flat earth and I will fight tooth and nail over flat earth. I'm holy. See, there's all these little the cliques and these cults and these divisions and these groups where people think that just because they are part of that and that they do that and they, that, that they pray in the King James Version. You know, isn't that kind of weird what... If you're talking to somebody and they're talking to you back, just having a normal conversation, and they're talking to you in the King James Version, I mean, isn't something wrong with that? See, but but we live in a day where folks think that because of the outside things that they do, that that makes them spiritual. That when we stand before the, I want you to hear me when I say this as I'm veering a little bit off on the message, but I, I want to I wanna get this point across. As we stand before the Lord on that day, it ain't going to matter if you were quote-unquote natural. I don't wear makeup because, when look, Jesus ain't going to say, oh, I see that you're natural. Enter into the kingdom. That garbage ain't going to matter. When we stand before the Lord on that, on that day, flat earth is not going to get us into the, into, into the kingdom. King James only is not going to get us into the kingdom. Only King Jesus. Why are you following King James only? Look, I'll choose to follow King Jesus only. You're following the wrong king. So... Here's another thing. 
Ain't nobody going to be able to vouch for you on that day. Hey, hey, but Lord, I follow Tim Henderson over there. Oh, Lord, I was with this group or that group. Look, your, your friends, your family tradition, people that you know, they won't be able to vouch for you. They're not going to be able to, to get you into heaven. Oh, Jesus, no, no, let them in, Jesus. I know them. No, it's not going to work that way. I know it works that way here in the world. It just doesn't work that way in the kingdom. And today is the day. See, and I'll say this again. This it, It's sad in my heart to just think about this. So many are going to be turned away. So many are going to be... Think about those who beat on the ark. You know, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah and Lot. Think about those who beat on the ark when they realized they were in trouble. But it was too late. They waited till it was too late. I think about in, in uh, uh, Genesis. I believe it's Genesis 19. where Lot warned his, his sons-in-laws. But they thought he was joking. They, 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 they laughed because they thought he was joking. They didn't take him seriously. And we got many mockers and scoffers today. And I want to get into this, to the mockers and scoffers. But let me continue to read this and I'll get into that. Because I think a lot of folks aren't realizing who the mockers and scoffers are. And I just want to give you some scripture here. But let me continue here. Verse 42 of Matthew 24. So be alert and give strict attention. Be cautious and active in faith. For you do not know which day, whether near or far, your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the head of the house had known what time of the night the thief was coming... He would have been on alert and would have not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you who follow me, you who follow me, this is still Jesus speaking. This is not Marcus requesting something from you. This is the Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ speaking. Now, if you're following Renee Moses, Renee, well, her too, because she's Renee Moses is a, is a joke as well. But if you're following Renee Roland, she's telling you, don't listen to the words of Jesus. Renee uh, Roland gets to pick and choose which uh, part of the word that you obey and you're allowing it. You're tolerating that woman, Jezebel, in your life who should not even be teaching to you. Therefore, you who follow me, this is verse 44, Matthew 24, 44. You who follow me also be, must also be ready because the son of man is coming at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then, I'll read verse 45. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his master has put in charge of his household to give others in the house their food and supplies at the proper time. You know, and Jesus goes on for the rest of Matthew 24 all the way into Matthew 25 giving the difference and the contrast between the faithful servant versus the unfaithful servant. So when we talk about watching for the Lord's return, I mean, Jesus goes straight into this. He doesn't stop. He goes straight into the faithful servant versus the unfaithful servant. So in the context of watching for the Lord's return, and Jesus said it right here, we must have active faith and follow him. Now, I, like I said, again, I read this straight out of the scripture, but if you choose that you, look, if you make the decision, you'd rather, you'd rather trust him who tells you that you don't have to follow Jesus, that you don't have to repent, or Renee, that you don't have to repent, or, 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 or Todd Napier, or whatever his name is, who drives around in his car with his sunglasses in, stealing the glory of God. Because he's got a fanfare of people that instead of giving their praises to the Lord God Almighty Jesus Christ, they give it to him. They give it to Todd. And the day is coming very shortly where these mockers and scoffers, because I'm here to tell you, 
When scripture speaks of the mockers and scoffers in 2 Peter chapter 3, it was speaking of these very individuals right here on YouTube, like Blue Heaven, like Rhonda Applepie, Emson, like Todd, like Tim Henderson, like Renee Rowland, like Steve Fletcher, like Barry Scoreball, and on and on and on and on they go. They literally are mocking and scoffing at the Lord's return. And let me, let me mention this again. In Acts 16, this woman that was following Paul and Silas, they were following him and declaring that these men are the servants of the Most High God. And they are declaring and pointing you to the way of salvation. But yet, she had a demon in her. A demon was speaking through her. And Paul turned and cast that demon out of her. See, these individuals here on, on the internet, they're declaring that the Lord's returning. They're declaring the rapture. But in their heart, ask yourself this question. In their heart, if they really believed, if they truly believed that the Lord's return was this near, if they truly believe that we were in the last days, and I do believe the Lord's return is that near, is near. Now, you know, I'm not going to be that one who comes on and saying, oh, rapture tomorrow, rapture next week. But I believe that we are in the last of the last days. Now, whether that be a month or a year or five years, I'm here to tell you that I believe that we are in the last of the last days. And I refuse to put a time frame on that. The Lord gave us the signs to look for. We are seeing those signs. And the Lord also clearly told us that we would not know the day or the hour, but that we are to live our, our, our walk and our life ready for his return. In other words, act of faith, following Jesus, walking in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now, if we refuse to do that, then all we are, is mocking and scoffing the Lord. We don't truly believe because if we truly believed that our salvation, that our eternal uh, uh, destination was on the line, would we be living for the devil right now while we're declaring Jesus is coming? No, these individuals, they are literally mocking and scoffing at the Lord's return. They are saying th that Jesus is coming, the rapture is near tomorrow, next week, this day, that day, while they then in the same breath tell you that you don't have to follow Jesus, that you don't have to repent, that you don't have to come out of fornication and adultery, that it's okay to be married three times in the last eight years and going, that you don't have to forgive your brothers and sisters. And then when those who stand up and speak truth, look, I thank God for brothers and sisters who speak truth. I think about Drew Bloom 34. You know, so many folks today, they want to use that talking point. Oh, love, love, love. If you stand up boldly and speak the truth of Jesus Christ, they call you unloving. And then they say, well, Jesus wouldn't do that. Jesus wouldn't call out the deceivers. Jesus wouldn't call people names. Jesus wouldn't expose people openly. You know what I appreciate about Brother Drew? He clearly goes to scripture and gives Bible truth. One of the few who points out Matthew 23. The very things that people say that, oh, Jesus wouldn't call them out. Jesus wouldn't call them names. Jesus wouldn't do this. is right there in Matthew 23. Why isn't it that so many people? So, so, so thank God for, for, for brothers like that who will point to the truth of Jesus Christ. Not, look, it's not about us being led by our feelings and emotions. And this is where most people want their walk to be. And when all you care about is your feelings and emotions, you won't, you won't want to be that peculiar person. And there's other brothers who are standing up and speaking the truth and pointing out this deception. And I thank God for them as well. But when all you care about is your, uh, 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 your, your emotions and your feelings and your following and how many... How many people who like you? Then you won't go. You won't. You won't go to the scripture. You won't stand on the truth. You won't declare the bold truth. You will just tell people what they want to hear. 
brothers and sisters who stand up and say, no, 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 that's not Bible truth. True biblical love warns the flock. True biblical love will protect uh, uh, the husband, protect the wife. As a husband, uh, uh, you know, as a husband, our job is to protect our family, to protect our wife. You know, God is the same way. He is a protector of the flock. You think about why the Egyptian army lost their lives. The entire Egyptian army lost their lives because of the love of God. Because of God's love for his people, he drowned an entire Egyptian army. Because of Jesus' love for the flock, he pulled out the whip on the money changers who were using the temple for their own gain, their own future, their own life, perverting the, t the, 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 the temple for their own self gain. And Jesus pulled out the whip and busted it on those jokers. Because of love, Jesus exposed the Pharisees. Because of love, John the Baptist, because of love for the flock, John the Baptist exposed the Pharisees and their lies. Because of Elijah's love for the flock, he called out and exposed the 850 false prophets of Baal. My job as a husband, because of my love for my wife, I protect my wife and will defend her. Because of God's love for us, he will protect us as husbands and wives and, and families. And on and on, on and on it goes. True biblical love will protect the flock, not the perpetrator. And we have a whole generation and a whole flock of individuals here on YouTube. They're goats. And these goats would prefer to defend the, defend the goat, de, excuse me, defend the wolf versus defending the flock. We know because of this that they are not of God. Now I want to end the message in Genesis, because Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah and Lot. You know, I gave you an example of how Lot tried to warn. His sons-in-laws. And they thought it was funny. They laughed at him. You know, before that happened, you know, Abraham. And the Lord had a back and forth. And the Lord says, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of the evil in this city, because of the evil in this place. I want to read to you uh, Genesis 6.11. It says, the population of the earth was corrupt, absolutely de deprived, spiritually and morally putrid. 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 Which means, and putrid means, and it's P-U-T-R-I-D. I might not be pronouncing it right, but it's P-U-T-R-I-D. And that means a decay. So there was a, a, a literal moral decay. Are we seeing that today in society? Are we seeing, I mean, is this, this not getting to the point of madness? Our quote unquote leaders here in this country I mean, I look at, you know, both sides of the aisle, even even the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, they're both. It's, do, you, do you see how, how much they are sliding to evil? The absolute ridiculousness, the moral decay. Look, I look at the Democratic Party and how they, they will fight for abortion tooth and nail. And then you have this click in the Republican Party. I say it's like 50 to 70 percent of the Republican Party. They really don't want abortion overturned themselves. They just act like they want it. There's a, see, there's only a few who truly are standing for the things of God. There's corruption. There's so much corruption. I'd say 100 percent of our Democratic Party here in the United States, or at least say 99 percent, and 70 percent of the Republican Party, they're corrupt to the core to the very core and i don't know how anyone in their right mind and in their conscience can support this kind of evil to sit there and say i'm a christian but i'm a democrat i'll vote democrat and I, i'll make excuses for abortion this abortion that abortion on demand but i'm christian 
I'll declare, I'll declare the word of the Lord. These men are servants of the most high God. I'm going back to Acts there, like that, that deprived woman, that, that, that woman, that, 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 that woman who had the demon in her, following Paul and Silas and, and declaring that they were men, they were servants of the most high God, and they're pointing you to the way of salvation. But yet she's got a demon in her. And many of you, y'all got demons in you. You sit there and say you're, you, you love Jesus, but then you keep supporting and, and voting for abortion. And you won't say nothing. You, 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 it's, it's all, God will take care of it. I mean, it, this, it, it, are we not coming to the point of, are we not here? It's not that we're coming to the point. We are here. Genesis chapter 6, verse 11. The population of the earth was corrupt. Absolutely depraved. Spiritually and morally putrid in God's sight. Just a continual decay. And the land was filled with violence, desecration, infringement, outrage. I, do we not see outrage all over the... It's always it's outrage this, outrage that, assault, and lust for power. God looked on the earth and saw how debased and degenerate it was, for all humanity had corrupted their way on the earth and lost their true direction. And God said to Noah, I intend to make an end of all that lives. For through men, the land is filled with violence. And behold, I am about to destroy them together with the land. And then, of course, in uh, Genesis 18, and we see that Abraham and, and uh, see the Lord had, had told Abraham he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and Sodom and Gomorrah. And then Abraham said, if you could just find 50, would you do it? If you just found 50 righteous men in the city, would you do it? And then the Lord says, okay, no, I, if we find 50, I won't. I won't destroy. And then it went down to 40 and 30 and then all the way down to 10. Well, we know that Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. So let me, let me read to you Genesis, Genesis 18, 20. And the Lord said, the outcry of the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah is indeed great, and their sin is exceedingly grave. Now we have a generation, we have a whole group of individuals here on YouTube who are declaring the word of the Lord and claiming that they are for Jesus, just like that, 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 that slave girl in Acts chapter 16 but they're preaching doctrines of demons. They are literally coming on camera and telling you it's okay to live for self. It's okay to live for the flesh and, and be immoral. The very thing that calls the Lord to bring judgment multiple times on the earth is happening right now, right before our eyes, Amongst these mockers and scoffers, see, this is the thing that, that gets me. The, the very ones who are declaring the rapture, they're, they're, there's, I'd say, 90% of them or more here on YouTube. The very who are actually declaring that Jesus is coming and the rapture is near, they themselves, by their very lifestyle, are mocking and scoffing. In their heart, they truly don't believe that the Lord's return is near. They do this for money and popularity. Either one or the other, or both. And you see many people on the, on the internet, they're getting free computers from their, their, their viewers. They're, they're getting thousands of dollars donated it into their PayPal account. They tell you what you want to hear. They make you feel good. They even come up, they even masters and con artists on making you feel sorry for them. Coming on with eye patches. Another time they come on with a, a neck brace. Another time they got, a, they got a cast on their hand. All the things that folks do, they're very cunning. They know how to get to your heart. They'll bring on their kids. They'll bring on their cats, their dogs, their monkeys. Look, look, look this dog, don't, don't, let me say this. Don't let a dog and pony show lead you to the lake of fire. These people, they say rapture now. I, I like how one per person put it in the comment section. These people say rapture now, but really all they want is your money now. 
while they mock and scoff at the Lord's return. Because if they really believed that the Lord was returning and his, 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 his return was this near, they would actually be declaring to you what Jesus declared there in Matthew 24. Repentance. To seek Jesus. To be that faithful servant versus the unfaithful servant. To be a follower of Jesus Christ. To take up your cross and follow him. To be Holy Spirit led. People, so many folks today, they want to talk about the work of the work of the cross, the work of the cross, but then they deny the very Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, who is a direct work of the cross. Judgment is coming speedily. And the question is, which side of the aisle, so to speak, are we going to be on? Are we going to be on that broad path? having that party at the bottom of the mountain with that golden calf, all in the name of the Lord, declaring the name of the Lord while we're living for self, while we're living our immoral ways? Or are we going to be on that narrow road? That road of folks who are choosing to crucify their flesh, to follow Jesus, to seek him with all, to seek him with all of our heart, as, as Je Jeremiah 29, 13 says, if you, if you search for me with all your heart, you will find me. Like, like King David prayed, oh Lord, search my heart. Renew in me a clean spirit, a right spirit within me. See, these ungodly individuals who live for self, they, they don't want Jesus to search their heart. They want Jesus to stay uh, somewhere there over the rainbow. Uh, mockers and scoffers, I want to uh, end the message with this. Some verses to give to you here. 2 Peter 3.3, 3, which speaks of the mockers and scoffers of this day. Now these liars, these, these, these wolves in sheep's clothing will go even go as far as calling the watchmen who are warning the flock of evil, they will call them the mockers and scoffers. See, that's just like Satan to do that, to try to, to, to it's like a smoke screen. I, I'll accuse them of doing, of what I'm, in other words, I'm projecting on other people of what I'm actually doing. Jude 18. You know, one of the things about Jude, verses three and four, we were warned that, uh, we were warned of those who would, Turn the grace of our God, turn the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ into lasciviousness. In other words, an excuse for immoral living. That was one of the clear warnings that Jude gave us there in verse 3 and 4. He went on to say that the people doing this, that their doom was predicted long ago. So doom doesn't mean that they're going to heaven. They're going to destruction. They're going to the lake of fire. In verse 18 of Jude, he went on to say that scoffers, he, he talked about scoffers, listen to this, scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. I'll say this one more time before I end the message. If we're following people who are following their own ungodly desires, all the while they preach rapture. All the while they say Jesus is coming three days from now or next week. Or I got a new calendar date or I got a new word or another dream, this, that, blah, 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 blah. While I live for self, while I continue to fornicate, commit adultery, while I continue to backstab and gossip and refuse to forgive my brothers and sisters and walk in bitterness and hate. I live for my ungodly desires. Ungodly, I live for my ungodly ways. But Jesus is coming and I'm watching for the rapture. No. These are the scoffers that the Lord warned us of. Scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. And then in Galatians chapter 6, this, this tops the cake right here. Verses 6 and 7. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. If we sow to the flesh, we will reap destruction. 
If we sow to the spirit, we will reap everlasting life. It says it right there, plain as, uh, plain as day, plain, plain and clear. If we're sowing to the flesh in our immoral ways, we are going to reap destruction. These are the mockers and scoffers that the, that the scripture warned us of. And they're all around us. They're dressed up as an angel of light. They come to you all harmless, like innocent sheep, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Today is the day, I'm going to say this here, today is the day to come off around that, to come out of that. God has called us, God has called you, he's called me to be a peculiar people. We are a chosen generation and he's called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Today is the day to turn to Jesus Christ, to receive him. He is waiting with open arms. He is waiting for us to turn to him, to repent and to follow him with a fire, with a passion and a desire to please him and, and serve him all the days of our life. Today is the day to follow Jesus Christ. If you have any prayer requests, uh, feel free to uh, inbox Esther or I at Facebook.com forward slash Find Truth 88, where we would love to agree with you in prayer and give you exhortation in God's holy truth.